In the second video about my active hammer I would like to explain what changes I have made to the mechanics and then demonstrate how well it now works. The failure comes first. In the previous video I told you that I wanted to implement a mechanism for straightening the electrode wire into the mechanics. I tried that but had no real success. Such mechanisms work with 4 or 5 rollers or fixed cylinders as follows. The wire is first bent in one direction in order to have a well defined radius. After that the wire is bent back until it is straight. My idea was to simply drive two of the rollers and thus combine wire feeding and wire straightening with the four rollers. But that didn't work because the 0.2mm tungsten wire came out of the mechanism in a corkscrew shape. Such wire straighteners typically work by pulling the wire through the mechanism. If the rollers themselves are converted into drives, the wire rotates in the mechanism due to the lack of wire tension, creating the corkscrew shape. Another problem is that when used as an active hammer, the wire not only moves forward but also back again during operation. Yes, I could probably make it work somehow, but that would result in a too complicated design while the intention of the series is to create a simple mechanism for spark erosion. Simple means I straighten a piece of wire using a mechanism without rollers that came out of my 3D printer and then fumble the straightened wire into the mechanism. That works well enough. The four rollers are now arranged differently and only function as wire feeder. Two of the ball bearings type 6 to 5 are driven by the stepper motor via a 40mm pulley with a rubber ring on the tread. I attached the toothed wheel of an extruder to the shaft of the stepper motor so that the drive generates enough friction. Two more bearings of the same type are pressed onto the driven ball bearings, the electrode wire runs between them. With the plastic arms, the ball bearings are pressed on the wire with almost constant force. By using two pairs of ball bearings, the force acting on the wire is reduced while there is enough friction to move the wire. Three guides ensure that the wire stays in position between the ball bearings. I spent most efforts in designing the contact point of the supply voltage with the electrode wire. This sliding contact consists of three copper tips that are clamped to the wire. Two of the tips are bent so that the clamp cannot slip off the electrode wire. This sliding contact actually hardly slides at all during the eroding process and that is the biggest trick of the arrangement. The gripper is attached to the frame via a flexible copper wire and can therefore move quite freely. If the electrode wire is moved upwards during the erosion process, the gripper moves with the wire and therefore doesn't slide. The same applies to the downward movement. Only the extra bit of downward movement caused by the electrode wear leads to a short sliding of the gripper. Virtually no sliding or grinding means that virtually no unwanted spark erosion occurs at this point. Furthermore, the distance between the gripper and the tip of the wire is quite short, which means that the resistance of the electrode wire in the circuit is kept as small as possible. An engraving process with 12 volts, which has, up to now, always failed due to a broken electrode wire, will show how well the system works. 
Since a fairly high current is forced through a fairly thin wire, I point the water cooling jet at the area with the gripper. As you can see, the engraving process works fine. However, the wire sometimes sticks to the workpiece. The tip of the tungsten wire welds to the steel disc. Nevertheless, the engraving can be completed without the electrode wire breaking. The result is not bad, the engraved lines are very deep. The points where the electrode wire has stuck to the steel disc can be recognized by broken lines or small deformations. The comparison of the outsticking piece of electrode wire at the top end before... ...and after two 5 minute engravings with 12 volts shows that almost no electrode wear has occurred. In the second run, I increased the power of the pump and directed the water jet at the tip of the electrode wire to prevent it from sticking to the steel disc. And yes, the electrode wire no longer welds to the steel of the workpiece. Also, my fear that the electrode wire could melt was not confirmed. I've come a lot closer to my goal of designing a reliably working active hammer. However, at the end of the engraving, the electrode wire stuck for a short moment. The 12 volts is quite a sledgehammer when it comes to spark erosion with a 0.2mm wire. The result is significantly better than attempt number 1. The short welding of the electrode wire to the workpiece cannot be seen in the finished engraving. The lines have been clearly transferred from the template to the steel disc. If you would like to get an own impression of the quality of this engraving, which only measures 16 times 15 mm you can purchase a Homo Fazins coin shown here. A big thank you to all the great people who have already supported my work on simple spark erosion through this hard currency. As almost always, the path to the improvements shown in this video was not a straight one. More about my work on spark erosion as well as the 3D files of the mechanics can be found on my pages, have a click. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.